Hi, welcome to today's BERT Tips and Tricks. I'm going to walk us through a, an architecture overview of open source BERT followed by an architecture overview of Actuate Commercial BERT. So first we'll start with open source BERT and we're going to depict first the environment within a, a given uh, application ecosystem. So first we'll represent your users on this end. And I'll just do a little bit of a drawing. This is supposed to be a browser of some sort. And then let's go on to this side. And I'm going to, let's say, draw a couple of representations of data. This can be a database. This can be cloud. This can be Hadoop. This can be application data. Any data that you can possibly imagine for your enterprise. So we'll say this is your data. And then in the middle, kind of the, uh, the goal is to make sure that you can facilitate getting information out of this data out to your users who want to access it via various devices and browsers. So in the middle, we also have your application. And we're going to depict that as a slightly larger box. Okay, so in this case, your web application is likely running on a web app server. Some very popular ones, for example, are JBoss, Apache, WebLogic, etc. So you want to imagine your web application running on your web app server of choice uh, here in the middle. But you notice that you still have not facilitated connecting data through your application to your users. This is where open source BERT comes in. So if we uh, look at these three layers here, we can kind of break them into activities, if you will. So there's an activity of creating a design. And this would be a design for formatting for the data. How do your users wish to see it? We need to design that experience. Then we also have here, deploy. So once you have that design, the definition of how that data will appear and behave, we then need to deploy it out to ultimately the users. The users will then consume it via various methods of display. So we have what we call the three D's of the BERT ecosystem. Design, deploy, and display. So before any of the BERT parts are in, this is your uh, uh, application, your enterprise, your OEM. Now let's facilitate drawing a line from your data through your application to your users. And we're going to utilize BERT as that vehicle. So what you do first in the open source world is you take advantage of the freely available Eclipse-based design environment called the BERT Designer. And this is the Eclipse version of SAME. So I'm just going to kind of draw this again as, an, as a box. We're going to call this Open Source BERT Designer. So this is an Eclipse-based environment that you install on your desktop. You use it to create definitions or designs of the data that you want to format and put out to your users. So the first part of that process is we connect from the design environment and map in your data sources. So BERT has the distinction, even open source BERT, of mapping together and being able to marry and federate disparate data sources. So that's all defined here. Then you also put into place charts and visualizations, look and feel, which results in an output that we call a BERT design, which is XML in technology here. So the output of the BERT design environment, the design process, is connecting to the data, creating what's then known as a BERT design. Okay, but notice that we're still not in deployment. We're still not in display. We still need a way to get these designs out to our users. So another part of the open source puzzle is that your developers, your web app developers, will download, in addition to the open source BERT designer, the open source BERT um, engines that will facilitate generating the XML design and outputting it in various formats. So we'll depict that here. So we'll say we've got, and just assume an integration process here. So we integrate the BERT engine. This is what generates the content and or 
the burnt viewer. And the reason I say or is because you can, you have the, the uh, luxury of only embedding those pieces that you need to, uh, to facilitate for deployment. So in this case, we're going to depict that we've got the full uh, gamut of capabilities from open source BERT. So our web app developers have now integrated the BERT engine and the BERT viewer into our application. So the next part of the puzzle is that our content designers will then move that design into the application itself. And this is just to a directory that's known and accessible to the application. And there we are. Bad handwriting aside, this is the XML design. So we've now copied it into a directory ostensibly within the web application context. So now how is it that we finally close the loop, facilitate your users being able to access data that you've now defined in this XML design? Well, it's all very elegant. In fact, because your web application developers have embedded the BERT engine and the BERT viewer, your application can now take incoming URLs and generate that content, and then further output it in various formats. So the users of your application will click links or go to certain pages that you've set up where you've embedded BERT content. But the simplest is to just simply issue a URL. So a URL is issued to your web application, which then passes that URL to the BERT engine. The BERT engine knows what to do with that incoming URL. So what it does is it now generates this XML design. It tells it to go back and get the data that you've mapped into this design. So at this point, we can erase these lines, and now the design is on or resident in the application. The URL comes in, the design and the engine know to go and fetch the data as mapped in that design and return it back to the BERT engine, which then renders it as a chart, or maybe as a table, or maybe as a dashboard. Uh, and it does this uh, all encapsulated in the uh, application itself, and ultimately returns as a response to this URL data-driven content. And this is, again, in the form of charts, in the form of reports, and in the open source, uh, open source implementation of BERT, uh, what you're probably noticing is that we haven't accommodated for any kind of administration. We haven't accommodated for any kind of security. That's because in open source BERT, it's intended that you'll actually take care of that, you'll build it yourself, or the needs of your application are such that you don't need these kinds of features. So again, an open source BERT-based application, very powerful, but meeting the needs of a modest set of requirements. The ability to output web pages that are data-driven in nature. Or two. Erase, erase as okay, I think I'm going to have to do some erasing. So imagine uh, very uh, witty banter going on here. But I'm going to leave some of these boxes in place. And uh, ultimately, a lot of this stuff stays the same. But I'm going to draw a couple of new boxes. So in fact, let me make this a little bit thinner. Ay -ay -ay. And make some other changes here. So this is now, let's see, I'm going to make some extra room. This now becomes the iHub. So we're going now into the commercial environment. Change your header. And yes, let me draw my extra couple of boxes here. And we'll say this is now your application your app, and then we've got an extra component here that we call Information Console. And we'll call this the web tier. So lastly, as my colleague aptly pointed out and deftly uh, reminded me, this is now the commercial 
environment. Commercial actuate BERT. My pen is starting to fail me just a dash, but okay, so a lot of the same flow of information. You notice that we've still broken out these main sort of tiers of activity. We still have a design area where you have your data. We still have your users where we have a display area. But notice that we've actually separated out now. What first was in the middle was your application. Now your application actually becomes a part of the iHub ecosystem. So your application is now represented here in the web tier. And as an add-on, we have what we call the information console, which is a web sort of conduit, if you will, into the iHub itself. So the iHub is actually made up of, whoops, is a cluster aware and made up of a set of volumes that can then become an application. So while it has parallels to the open source um, environment, the main difference is that the iHub is not running under your application context. So for especially environments where the information is highly voluminous or the users are highly voluminous, you don't want to saddle your application with having to constantly generate that much content and handle that much data. So for that, we take the onus off of your application, put it squarely on the iHub. So the iHub is the cluster aware, massively scalable deployment environment tailor built specifically to deploy out BERT content. So we also have a couple of extra boxes here. So the iHub itself handles scale, it handles storage, it handles management and administration of content, and it also handles securing of that content. Okay, so notice that we've got a lot more going on here than in the open source environment because the engine is already encapsulated in the iHub itself. So this means that what we've done is we've taken the engine and built on all of these value add features, not the least of which is massive scale. And uh, also the ability to uh, store and manage con uh, persistent content, something that you would otherwise have to build yourself in your own application. Uh, the ability to do things like scheduling, offer the, your, your users the ability to share, other kinds of uh, management and administrative capabilities built right in. And then probably most importantly is the ability to tie in with your application security, your user security. So when they log into the application, the information that they are seeing is using the same security rules. Nobody sees anything on the iHub that they're not supposed to see. So now we can kind of draw the lines the same way we did before. And you're going to notice uh, strong parallels because it's essentially the same flow of information while at the same time taking advantage of this huge efficiency of bringing the iHub into the overall uh, environment. So similarly, your users will be in your application and when they want to access a report or a dashboard, that's all encapsulated in a URL at its simplest, which is then passed through your app through our information console, ultimately into the iHub itself. So also what I failed to draw earlier is that another part of the ecosystem here is the Actuate BERT Designer. So the Actuate BERT Designer brings the benefit of additional data sources and additional capabilities to the design environment. So you're able to actually do things like create dashboards, things that you can't do in open source. You can create data objects, encapsulations of data that you can't create in open source. And there's several others. Uh, for example, HTML5 visualizations. I'll make sure we get grab that as well. HTML5. So these are kind of the biggies, if you will. But the process is the same. You connect up to your sources. You create that XML BERT design. Because again, it's all under the covers, it's all open source BERT. So then we move this into the volume. 
And of course, we want to assume that there's multiple documents here. So an application is made up of interconnected multiple bits of BERT content that all create the application experience. So once this content is loaded into the volume under the auspices of an application, then your users come in, the URL comes in, hits the, uh, the iHub itself, which then knows within the BERT design itself what data to go get. So this happens again, the data is returned. The output is then rendered out and passed back through the information console and ultimately your application. What's different here is that we're not just outputting what's a otherwise kind of a static report. You know, definitely BERT reports are robust, but they don't do much. What the commercial value add feature is for the display tier is that we bring interactivity. So interactivity becomes an integral part of the user's experience with any BERT content. Additionally, in commercial iHub deployment, we get dashboards. Also, we get data objects. Data objects are an encapsulation of data that can be uh, placed onto the iHub and accessed by users for ad hoc report building or ad hoc dashboard building. And then we also have various and sundry other really cool out of the box value add features, maps, mobile, analytics, and this is where we would assume that uh, our sales reps would put whatever things that they actually want to pitch appropriately here or just put the whole gamut. But really what we want to emphasize is that the output, while the ecosystem and the process flow is kind of the same, the output is greatly enhanced and improved over what you get out of open source. So the end user's experience is thusly. You also have separated out the generation, management, and deployment from your application. So your application is free to do what your application is best at. And you leave the iHub to do what it's best at. Generate, secure, and deploy BERT-based content. And then lastly, the puzzle on the, uh, the commercial side begins with the Actuate BERT Designer. So it's the same tool as the open source BERT Designer with the value add features, uh, amongst others, of being able to create dashboards, data objects, and leverage HTML5-based interactive visualizations. So all of this then gives us the 3D. We get the 3D effect. Design, deploy, and display. So I hope you've enjoyed this BERT Minute and uh, look forward to our next one. Stay tuned. So um, I would definitely, in my redo, recommend that we sort of go, you know, this way yeah. rather than back this way. So right now I'm focused on that actually for uh, de um, designer. Yep. Is that uh, uh, the Bird Pro or the? Uh, yes, actually Bird Designer Professional. Thank you for the distinction. So this uh, definitely is head and shoulders above its uh, free open source free brother. Right. brother. Exactly. So that's under design. I'm going to go over to deploy, and I'm going to go up a little bit here and talk a little bit about, first off, the iHub, which was the application layer right there. That focuses on what? So th these are actually concepts that are internal to the iHub itself. Mm -hmm. So the iHub has a, a concept, and in fact, we could almost actually change these around. They're almost interchangeable. But really what we call is any collection of content, users, and um, access rules is a volume. Mm -hmm. And you can have any given iHub can manage multiple volumes. Mm -hmm. As such, it can, you know, an application can be made up of multiple volumes on multiple machines. So we start to get into deeper concepts of what is uh, high availability, what's fault tolerance, what's uh, the ability for 99.999% uptime. These are all the things that the iHub is able to achieve because of this um, concept 
of being able to a, a single installation manage multiple hardware, mm -hmm. multiple uh, instances of software in volumes, and that can be then sort of housed together as an overall uh, application experience. And this could be in a cluster formation and or in bare metal? Exactly. That's so. well put, exactly. So we actually do have some deeper uh, uh, diagrams that are intended for a more technical audience, uh, not quite as uh, uh, easy and straightforward to draw out in whiteboard, but we're going to be uh, rolling those out as we uh, as we move forward. I'm moving down and obviously past volumes and Senator scale, store, manage, and secure. That really is very different from uh, the open source versions then. Indeed. You so really, you really can't do any of those things natively. You have to like create your own storage. Exactly. To create your own management add-on. That's exactly what, uh, what we really want to, uh, can't overemphasize is that all of these things that are, you know, uh, just indicative of, you know, many more and deeper features, you have to build. So when you go with open source, you truly get just a generation engine and a rendering engine and a design environment. But the rest is really up to you. And that's why we see people that are starting out with modest requirements get started with something fairly straightforward. But then when people see it, they say, I want to move to the next level. It becomes then popular and they have to start thinking of things like, I've got a lot of users and now I've got a lot of data. Or my users want to do more with it than open source can actually accommodate. We'll get to the display in a second. Okay. Talk a little bit about the web layer, the web tier. Sure. I see it as an infor uh, I'm sorry, interactive console. In information console. Information console. Probably best drawn, uh, yeah, written yeah. all the way out. That's fine. So information console is uh, sort of the web tier conduit. The information console uses our own uh, APIs to talk to the iHub. And so this is out of the box, your um, folder-based uh, portal access into your uh, iHub set of uh, documents and things like that. But more commonly what people do is they don't use our out-of-the-box portal. They'll actually utilize our integration technology, our embedding uh, uh, APIs, so that um, all traffic is actually going through the application, the application layer. Not through IC. Exactly. So if I'm not, if I'm designing it. If I'm a developer who's yep. designing this this uh, architecture, IC obviously becomes a very important point to that. Yes. However, the admin for the application will not necessarily need to access the IC. That's correct. So in this model, the information console is simply a conduit. It's our container for uh, the various APIs that understand incoming URLs as well as our JavaScript API for embedding. So, but uh, yeah, it's very common in many applications that users never see our information console ever. And it's only there as an intermediary to funnel things coming through your application and uh, things back out from the iHub itself. Finally, under display, yes. um, you know, your users um, are demanding new things. They want, and I'm just gonna focus in on that little list there. Yep. They want interactivity, they want uh, dashboards, they want data objects, maps, um, you know, uh, analytics, and mobile. Uh, these are not native to BERT open source, open source career, uh, evaluations of BERT, right? That's correct. So another key here is that, I mean, BERT being open, certainly any uh, development, you know, what that has tons of time and tons of resources can build any of this stuff for themselves. After all, it's open source software. So, but what we say is we've already put tens of thousands of man hours, person hours, if you will, into uh, building out this type of thing. So why not take advantage of what we've done rather than reinvent the wheel, get on the commercial stack, realize this uh, value add, these value add features immediately. You're able to then respond more nimbly to the needs of your users. And incidentally, all of this because of its open source underpinnings can even be extended. So you don't have to just take what we've built for you. You can take that as a starting place and extend it even further. So this could even be a jump start to a truly bespoke application. Last time, I'm just going to back out. Sure. People get to see the whole enchilada. So this is your commercial actuate BERT uh, using iHub to access uh, data either in a database or in the cloud, connecting your data with your users through a customer-facing application.